Cheers, guys. Epics 911. Welcome to the Wednesday, March 8th edition of VR News. Let's start with the board game of chess. So chess has been around basically since the 600s in what is now India. The version that we know today, kind of that modern version of chess, that was developed in the 1400s in Spain. And as long as there have been computers, there have basically been chess programs for those computers. Consoles, no different. You had to think VR wasn't going to get left out, and we certainly haven't been left out. We are getting Chess Ultra from developer Ripstone Games. All platforms, PlayStation, VR, Rift, and Vive, all major ones, non-mobile, I should have stated. They're not telling us a lot beyond it's going to release in the spring, and that it's got 10 different AI levels that you can battle against. Other than that, they're being pretty hushed. Now, there is a video you can check out. It is a classy as hell looking piece of software. And that's the beautiful thing about chess is the game itself, it's just perfectly suited to computers. And the two have just grown pretty much in parallel, right? It's been the desire of so many to create the chess program to beat human grandmasters. And the game just is complemented so much because what computers are really good at is how chess runs itself, the rules behind the game. Computers are just well suited to that. So as a result of that, we've got decades of progress. So hopefully Chess Ultra, like that, a very good and strong, capable chess program that doesn't cheese out with the difficulty. And if you've played chess programs, you'll know what I mean where the beginner ones, the way, the way that they dumb down the chess program isn't the best way to go about it. And there's programs that do that very well, and then programs that don't do that so well. Hopefully, Chess Ultra is one of the ones that does it well. All right, PlayStation 4 update that I said was coming yesterday. I was not correct. It is actually coming tomorrow. They have revised it to March 9th, Thursday. So it's going to come tomorrow again. That's the 4.50 PlayStation 4 update, which also will have 2.40 for PlayStation VR. Tracking, cinematic mode, and a, bu a bunch of other features in those updates. All right. Speaking of PlayStation and PlayStation VR specifically... The game Farpoint, which is coming bundled with an AIM controller, we now have a price for the game. So we knew it was coming out May 17th. Now we know for how much. $79.99 US, which is basically 100 bucks Canadian, or 75 pounds if you're in the UK. Anywhere else, you'll have to go to the link and uh, do the calculation. But those are the three costs that they listed. Now, they are not bundling the gun on its own, but they do have a standalone version of the game because apparently it is compatible with DualShock 4, but they highly, and they stress that in bold, capitalized, and underlined letters, recommend you play it with the aim controller instead. All right, students from Utah State University have successfully hacked positional tracking using Steam VR into a Gear VR. And the two students, Brady and Sam, basically created a positional tracking solution for Gear VR using that. So what they did, they've got three infrared sensors, and those sensors detect the flashes from the base station. They're attached to the front of the Gear VR headset, so right on, on your HMD connected to a microcontroller, which using UDP over Wi-Fi connects and uses the Unity game engine to basically communicate, relay the data, and provide the tracking information. Just one of those cool things that HTC probably didn't directly intend to have happen, but that's one of the benefits of going open with things is you allow people to experiment and fiddle 
And out of that can come some really damn amazing stuff. And if this takes off, and it's always one of those things, okay, so you develop positional tracking. Well, unless people buy the supplemental peripherals, not a lot of people are going to program specifically for that. But hopefully, if the sensors are the right price and the game enticing enough, you know, they get a couple of indie developers with some really strong games or hell, a AAA publisher or two, they could turn their fortunes around. But either way, really cool hack. Way more technical details at the link in the description below. Vimeo is launching 360 degree video capability. So for uh, basically viewing and content creators. Now this is a subscription based service, not like YouTube. You basically pay money to view, even developers, content creators, you pay a subscription fee to deploy. It's not something I've ever used. In fact, doing a bit of an informal poll with family and friends, nobody that I know, even at work, has heard of Vimeo in terms of its actual functioning, like used it. So, curious, any of you out there that use it? If so, what's it like? Now, it's gonna add a couple of neat things for the developers, but I can't speak to how good that is given the costs and the subscription and everything else, because I just don't know. But apparently, for the 360 degree videos, they're kind of future-proofing themselves by allowing resolutions up to 8K. So up to and including 8K. All right, a bit of a fun news piece on this next one, Nintendo, this is an upload VR one. Nintendo games we would love to see in VR if the Switch could do VR. Now, they listed a handful of games, F-Zero, Pokemon Stadium, WarioWare, Punch-Out VR, Lynx Master Sword Training, Super Mario VR World, and Metroid Prime. Now, of course, I agree with Metroid Prime. Played that on Dolphin VR. If you haven't tried Dolphin VR yet, uh, very, very cool experience. There's some glitches. It's not perfect, but I have had more success with that, for example, than I have with Vorpex, which continues to vex me. But anyways, I got to thinking, what would I like to see from Nintendo? What did they miss that I would love to see on there? And I'd love to hear your top three or five Nintendo games. So what I had was basically any of the handful of the last few Zelda games. Uh, there's some really good ones, I think, that would translate amazingly to VR. Mario 64, of course, the N64 version, where the whole 3D thing for Mario started, I think would be perfect. You mentioned F-Zero, but they didn't mention Mario Kart, which, again, I think would be perfect, along with Sky Fox, uh, sorry, Star Fox 64. Smash Brothers. Now, before you chuckle on that one, what I was thinking about it was the way the game plays. If you look at the strengths of the game, the, you know, the, the offense, defense, I think that could translate if done correctly. And absolutely, it would require some finesse programming. But I think you could capture that in VR and actually make it fun. And then lastly, again, probably another one to chuckle about, Duck Hunt. Now, where I was going with that is Space Pirate Trainer. I kind of envisioned Duck Hunt feeling a little bit like that, right? The Nintendo charm and look, but kind of adopt the, the pacing and the attitude of Space Pirate Trainer, I think would be freaking fantastic for VR. All right, this next news piece, an upload VR interview with Alvin Graylin. And it was what he said. So he basically, he's been asked about the trackers. And he said, we're going to enable a lot of people who aren't hardware developers to make stuff. Who, if they just had a baseball bat now, boom, they've got something like Trinity. That's the kind of stuff that will happen. And they're going to get more creative than we are because they know they want to sell. I would think by the middle of this year, we could have hundreds of hardware accessories for the Vive. Now... Unless I'm misunderstanding, what I would like to see, obviously, is an emphasis of quality 
over quantity. Now, it's great that the potential for 100 plus accessories would be out there, but depending on how it's created, if it's very specific to one game or experience, if it doesn't have a shelf life beyond that one game or one experience, ultimately it may not be that successful and not sell well and not do well and leave people with a device that basically works for one game that over time they may not even like that much. So I would hope an emphasis on quality, stuff like the full body tracking, uh, innovative uses for the trackers rather than, you know, a quantity approach because there's all kinds of cool, tangible, moving forward type stuff that you could do. Next news story, Sony sharing their top 10 downloads for February on PlayStation VR. Just going to put the list up here. No surprise, number one continues to be Job Simulator, and it has been for the last few months. There's a few on here that I agree with. I don't think you can argue with Until Dawn, Rush of Blood. A couple on there. Um, the Carnival Games, not so sure. The VR Worlds, not so sure. But it is what it is. Those are the downloads. Now, what I am curious about is why no Resident Evil 7. And I guess the main question I would have is, did they classify that as a non-VR game? Because it is a, essentially a non-VR game with VR functionality appended to it. If they didn't include it for that reason, it makes sense. If that's not the case, I would question, shouldn't it qualify? Because we know it's in the hundreds of thousands. Unless these other ones just did that awesome, right? All right, next news piece, Oculus Facebook integration. So this isn't a story posted anywhere. This is just an original piece based on my research the last few days, which kind of got me thinking about how closely and how that relationship of acquisition has kind of flipped right in front of our eyes over the course of the last year. So if you rewind to, let's just pick E3 in 2016, it was still very much the Oculus show. Facebook firmly in the background. Then, the last few months, we see things change. For example, Mark Zuckerberg taking more of a, you know, front and center approach. He did the keynote, for example, at the Connect conference. The visibility of Facebook during the trial. And it's one thing to get called in by the people that are doing the suing. But the defense strategy invoked Facebook as well. Then the big one here, and it kind of ties into the next story, is Facebook launching Samsung Gear VR app dedicated to showing 360 degree videos and content. So this is a Facebook specific branding and that's a first till now it's all been done through oculus normally that story would have been oculus is launching Samsung gear VR app but not this time it's being credited and branded to Facebook so very interesting and I wonder how much more like we still don't know for example lucky where is he in terms of his role is he going to be back? What the hell is he doing? It's been months. We've heard nothing. Not that it's that important. It's just more a curiosity thing. Because it certainly looks like it's turned to Facebook is very much front and center in this acquisition. Just within this last year. So. Now. That does tie in, like I said, to the next one, and that's Facebook launching a Samsung Gear VR app dedicated to showing 360 degree pics and videos. And you can get this through the Oculus app on any Gear VR compatible device. So it's called the Facebook 360. That's actually the name of it. So you can check that out. And uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts on that, on the branding. Is that, uh, what do you think the reason for that is? Does it go beyond marketing? Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. All right, guys. As always, cheers.